Hey guys, it's Kevin. Today we're going to talk about uh, pizza wheels. Uh, they also call the star wheels. Um, well, we're going to cut these two two series because uh, uh, there are lots of stuff. If I put it in one, I will never finish. Those are pizza wheels. When the paper comes out, those wheels press the paper down so paper can be flat. Uh, for regular papers, you can just uh, uh, put a paper, uh, just uh, spray some uh, alcohol and uh, move the paper back and forth and clean it. The problem is uh, when you use a coated paper, we, we all know that uh, for the dye ink, dye ink gets absorbed into the, uh, into the paper and uh, the pigment ink lay on top of the paper. So when you print the coated paper, it's different. There are some coatings, they, they let the dye flow on top of the paper, so uh, so the the dye will not get ever get uh, absorbed by the paper. So if the surface is wet, those little wheels going to dip into the a pool for the ink. It, it leave a pizza wheel mark. This problem is severe for people print uh, photos, uh, large scale photos, and also for the sublimation. The challenge of sub sublimation is uh, the ink is thin so you want you want put as much color there as possible so in sublimation there's something called uh, overload pigment overloading which is you try to make the ink base can take as much colorant as possible so if you make, can make the paper take more ink you have a better image you have a more a uh, more vibrant image. That's why not only p only the ink is overloaded. You o you also overloaded the ink volume. Okay, let me let me just show you how it works. Any hockey player here? Okay, here's the Carolina Stars that my son plays. I'll use Photoshop and I go to Print. I'll use a sublimation printing as example. Uh, because sublim sublimation folks, they overloaded the paper uh, up to a gazillion level. So if you understand the sublimation printing, or you also understand the photo printing, how you overload uh, your, your inks in the photo printing. Let's talk about the paper type. Paper type controls how much ink the printhead is going to use. The plain paper takes uh, the least amount of ink. Uh, let me set the quality to high and uh, print one page as, as example. The sublimation folks won't satisfy with the plain paper, so they go to uh, print settings and they set to mate. Uh, quality is still high, same thing. I print another page. You know sublimation folks, uh, good is not enough, they want the best. So they go going to play with uh, the ink density. So they go to print settings, go to maintenance tab, and go to extended settings. And uh, this print density, you can slide, you can print with slight ink and more ink, and let's crank it up to 20% more. Let's see the result. Uh, uh, first of all, all those papers are their plain papers. Okay, and although I set it with the mid settings, uh, those are just settings. The real paper is a plain uncoated paper. So this setting is a plain paper and the ink level uh, ink density is zero. With the same ink density you change the setting to mate uh, you can see how bright how colorful the mate is. And this is the mate plus 20. This is the most dense the most colorful picture you can ever produce. All three pictures no pizza mark everything's perfect. Uh, I didn't show you as I also print a mate with a density of negative 50. Uh, you can see at the lowest ink density the mate still beats the plain paper. Now you can appreciate how much ink the mate put on the page and uh, how hard it is to have a mate plus 20. Okay now we're going to print uncoded paper. This is coated uh, sublimation paper. You can see at the plain paper density 0%, no problem, no pizza wheel mark. And uh, when we set a setting to mate, 
and uh, the color is much better, but you get this uh, scratch mark. And those scratch marks are from the printhead moving and scratch the surface of paper. And I start getting the, the pizza wheel marks. In the real production, this is going to ruin day because uh, each page of a transfer paper that costs money. That was a made plus zero. Now let's see made plus 20. And uh, we can see the pizza wheel marks and uh, print as track marks. You can see the paper is still not dry, still warped. And uh, when it goes to print, it is either scratched by the moving print head or it got pressed down and left a mark by the pizza wheel. Uh, the first solution is simple. Uh, we just reduce the amount of ink we put on the paper. And we also control the, the printing time, so we make a printer print slower, so give the paper a little bit more time to dry. We still choose mate and high quality. However, we in the maintenance, we just decrease the ink level to negative 50%. Okay, here's a mate, uh, density negative 50. It's much better than the plain paper that you can use. Uh, of course, it's not as good as the mate at the density zero. Of course, you can tweak the density and uh, and tweak it a little bit higher if your paper can tolerate it. Uh, furthermore, uh, in the same printing dialog, if you go to more options, we can turn off the high speed. Okay, what this is, the high speed is when the printf move back does it print if you turn it off uh, you can see the printhead doesn't print on the way back it only print on the way forward this way you can reduce the speed of printing so give the paper a little bit more time to dry uh, to summarize this first solution if we get this mate working at high quality that's going to preserve the uh, the vibrant color and uh, we turn off the high speed so give uh, 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 give the paper more time to dry uh, so decrease the print head scratching problem and in the maintenance we decrease the ink volume by 50 percent and then you can print at a little bit higher percent like a negative 40 negative 30 and uh, all the way up see how much your paper can take Okay, I can move to method two without showing something crazy. Every Epson has a door trigger that if you leave the scanner door, uh, uh, it's going to stop the printer from printing. Here, I just use a piece of uh, napkin, just jam the sensor. So in the middle of the printing, I'm going to remove that piece of napkin, let the printer stop. You can see it's about to touch the pizza wheel. Now you can give the printer more time to dry. And uh, when it's dry, you can just reinsert the napkin back and uh, it'll go back to printing. Uh, to speed it up, I'm going to use a leaf blower. Uh, actually, I tried uh, the hair dryer before and uh, the Problem is the hair dryer uh, uh, dried up the printhead, so I got a clock printhead, and uh, so I just keep using the leaf blower, and I blow in the in the way away from the printhead. I found this way never clocks my printhead, so I keep doing this. I also count how many times the printhead moved, so I normally do five to uh, six times, then I start blowing. Uh, of course, I don't do this for every single sublimation transfer. I do this when I wanted the mate plus 20, the maximum. Also, I only do this for the image that's important, such as my son's uh, hockey team logo. Okay, here's your perfect mate plus 20 that uh, no other people can produce. 
Uh, remember, we're gonna get a scratch marks even at uh, mate zero. Uh, in the next video, uh, if I have time to do it, uh, we're gonna take this wheel off. It's not as simple as it sounds. Firstly, uh, the function of the wheel is to press the paper down. So you need something to keep the paper down and flat. Secondly, there's a PIS sensor on the wheel, and uh, lots of them are built into the wheel. So you need to deal with that sensor. In a nutshell, we're going to have a platform and uh, underneath the paper. So the platform have little holes to suck the air in. The, those are connected to a regular house vacuum. So if you have a house vacuum, you just take the hose out, connect to this adapter. And here's where the platform will reside. So the paper will be pressed down by the air pressure rather than the pizza wheel. And uh, actually, if not pressed, it gets sucked uh, on the platform, so it will stay flat. Hope I won't get too busy and uh, can shoot the second one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally, Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers.